Right, we've left Uluru and we're heading back up the Stewart Highway, back towards the top of Australia, but we're taking a detour. Rather than going straight up Dallas Springs, we're going to go around what's called the Marini Loop. It's sealed around the Kings Canyon and then it'll go a little bit dirt from there to get us around to the McDonald Ranges. We've just come out of the National Park and it's straight onto gravel. It's pretty corrugated straight away. We're going to pull over and find a spot, safe spot. It's a bit soft on the shoulder here, so it's going to pull over up here. It's just past Kings Creek Station, so it's sealed, sorry, Kings Creek Resort, so it's sealed all the way to there. And then you get this on the way out to the free camp that we're aiming for. So if we get up to here, we should be able to do lower down and we should be good. Although, as I'm saying, that's starting to improve a little bit. I think we'll air down anyway, just to be sure. Down to 35 in the back, 30 on the front. We'll try that out. We can go as low as 20s usually, but this one isn't too bad. All right, that's the last one. I've ended up putting just 25 in each of the rears of the caravan because I figured they're a little bit softer. Hopefully that gets a bit of a ride, better ride. And in the car, we'll just make sure the car's going all right. So the car with a higher pressure will feel the bumps a bit more than perhaps what the van will with the lower pressure, keeping everything in check. We're able to just cruise along. We're just, we're about 60 k's per hour. You can probably go a little bit quicker, but it's not worth taking risks, especially when you're this remote. I don't want to do any damage to anything and um, getting there a little bit later isn't too much of a problem, see a massive dip here. Things like that, that's how you get big issues, big damage, stuff like that. So a little bit slower, takes a little bit longer, but hell, imagine the time you kill if you, you broke an axle or did something worse. We met a guy just now and he uh, pulled up there for a ride, told him I was just lowering the pressures and he said he hadn't done it. He'd been sitting on 80, 90 k's the whole way, sort of bouncing over them. He had a smaller setup than us, obviously. Each to their own. We just come up the hill with some magnificent views. We pull in, 24 hour overnight camping, Kings Canyon straight ahead. No one here. That'll do. Oh man, it's massive too. Look at that. Oh. That's unreal. Oh. That's one of the best spot. We've decided that the prime location is down the bottom here. Show you the views in a minute. This is why you have an off road. Look at that. No problem. So what we're going to do is turn around down here. You can see Kings Canyon over there in the background. Turn around and back it in down the end there. Right down here. Then we're going to go between these two trees. Okay. Between, oh, these two here. Through right there. Bang. Unless, no, I won't get around that one. This one. And then I'm going to back it down over that fire pit. And see how it's flat just here. Wow, eh? I'm going to put the van right smack bang there. Right to there, okay. Right to there. You're All welcome. right. All right. You. Pretty good view where we are. You are welcome. I'm on record as saying it's pretty good where we are. This is where he, that's where he wants to get to. Yep, bring it around. Okay, in that angle? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a pretty good spot. We got down. We're right here. There's these little fire pits everywhere. I checked that one. It's not hot or anything, so we're okay. Even with your um, major fear of heights and edges. We're good, no need to go there. <laughs> We've been able to park down on a pretty level site, haven't needed our levelling ramps, and have a look at this view out the back, basically at the side. Wowee. This whole place just looks landscaped. It's amazing. 
looks like they've had someone come in, lay out all the plants. So beautiful. And for tonight at least, it's all ours. No one else around. All set up. Doesn't get much better than that. Some good out back wood. Sunset. There we go. We we're hoping to find somewhere where we could just set up on our own, no one else around, have a campfire, and this is a spot. Awesome. Better than TV, that's for sure. We're heading now down to Kings Canyon, leaving the campsite. It's about 20 k's, but we get to do it now without the caravan on the back. You get to enjoy these beautiful views as you come down the hairpin. And you can see just in the background now, there's Kings Canyon, that's where we're headed. We're gonna go do some hiking. Here we go. We're a bit worried Harry might fall over, so we've asked him to pull his socks right up. <laughs> Crikey! <laughs> Shiny wheels, mate. Let's go. <laughs> that's as high as they go. Alright, let's go for a walk. Alright, so we've got a few different options for walks. We're going to be doing the Kings Canyon Rim Walk. That's a bigger one here. You can walk all the way back to another spot. We're not doing that 22 k's. So we've been told it'll take two, two and a half hours. Off we go. The hardest part is the start. So it's about 500 stairs you've got to get up. And then once you're up on that rim, it becomes much easier. And obviously the views are a lot better too. Always well, good to have the start of a walk as the tricky bit instead of the end. <laughs> Look at that. That's the stairs. Straight up. Tell you what, the view would want to be worth it. It's already pretty nice. These uh, natural rock stairs, they've done a great job making them. Solid start. Bit of hard work getting up here. We're just having a bit of a break. This is about the halfway point. Taking in some water. You can see the bench seat. You can see that's a car park right down there. So we've come up from there. Halfway up. On our way to the top of the roof. So, we've got to the top, I think, almost. Yep, this is nearly room. This is showing us a cross-section of how the gorge has changed over time, or the canyon, isn't it? So the wind blew the sand in different directions at different times, and that's what caused the cross bedding. 440 million years old, and this is made of quartz and silica, so it's really hard sandstone. We've now climbed up 100 metres to the top of the rim, and we've got a much more leisurely walk around it. Harry's just spotted a sweet-looking lizard. Look at him. Whoa, he's gone. If you'd seen some of our last Western Australia videos, you would have seen the bungle bungles. Very similar to this, these beehive like structures. Unreal. Making our way up over these rocks. Up above Kings Canyon here. So there's a bit of a lookout. Steph is suitably terrified. You can see in the in the rocks here some weird shapes and there's these curves for example and this is from pressure so as this entire gorge ripped itself apart and eventually fell down there's a lot of pressure that built up in some of the weaknesses causing these big cracks and this is the same sort of i guess geological uh, forces that helped form uluru the algas and some of the other things like mount connor in the region Coming around the corner over here, this is phenomenal. So they talk about the split, there was originally a split and then it, it broke off to form the rest of the canyon. But coming around, the colours on this side are so different to the other side. That's uh, really pretty. It's almost like it's had trees or something rubbing against it. Time All that friction as it broke apart. About doing this walk into fitness, I'll tell you what, they've catered for you. There's defibrillators everywhere. We've passed two helicopter landing spots already, plus a big box of first aid equipment. Unreal. This is Cotterill's Lookout, 600 metres extra, dropped off some baggage and uh, we're going to go have a look at it. Up we go, Steph's not feeling too well so we're giving her a chop out. Alright, I've lost the boys, I'm going onwards myself, they're going back to talk. We're going up, over to the bridge. It's Cotterill's Bridge, so it's jumping over some cracks. Look at this, this is built a bridge in 1962 to come across some of the big cracks here up to look at. We're hopping along on these bungle bungle type shapes cruising over to apparently there's a bit of a water lookout up here. You wouldn't say it's the uh, easiest uh, walk to do. A bit of jumping, a bit of movement round. 
But sure is different. Again, this is something we haven't seen before. Different formations, different type of gorge, different shapes and colours. I think if you're doing the same sort of thing all the time, you get pretty bored. But tell you what, Australia, heaps of different stuff to see. This is the end of the Mark Trail. I don't know how I worked that out. Apparently up here you can see some water. How impressive is nature? On top of all these rocks, we've got this green tree living up top in a crack with some native grasses. Well played, sir. There's the water. Wow. That's pretty cool. A couple of Europeans getting their selfies. All right, we've grouped back up and we're heading down towards the Garden of Eden. So that was what I could see from the top was the water at the base of Garden of Eden. It was a lookout over it. And going this way, you've got the option to go down. So I'll see if we can talk the team into going down to check it out. So this canyon is the local water hole and there's frogs, birds, plants. There's heaps of water at the end of it. And in the rainy season, it pours through, filling up a water hole at the end. I feel like I'm almost filming a mine shaft from down here. It's like a mine shaft kind of set up. This here, this is the Garden of Eden. Flat at this part of the walk, so we're on the other side of the canyon now, heading back to the car park. It's been a good walk, quite different to everything else we've done. This side of the canyon isn't nearly as pretty as the other side, it's still great and there's still great views. But if you're thinking about doing it, the shorter southern loop, which only takes you about halfway up to the Garden of Eden, you won't get all the views. So if you can, do the bigger walk and you're going to be rewarded with stunning views like this one, but views over into the canyon, which is pretty cool. You can see the car park. <laughs> we can, but we still got to get down this, all the way down to that car park. And we are done. We fulfilled our obligations towards King's Canyon. Jed, are you happy? Yeah. Well, that was a great stay. That was one of our best free camps that we've had in terms of stays, right up there with Kwondong. Um, Frickin' hell, yeah. Second yeah, favorite yeah. after Kwondong. Yep, yeah, definitely. So now we're headed off with gone back onto the dirt road now so it's sealed a little bit up to that lookout point just I guess to stop erosion. We're back on a dirt road now in the Marini loop heading towards Marini and we've probably got a couple of hours driving ahead of us on a, a corrugated dirt road but it's actually quite reasonable at the moment. We're just sitting on 80. Tyres are down to around 30 a pop. And, um, Don't say pop when yeah. you're talking about tyres. I don't know, I'm <laughs> myself. And we should roll into, I think first up there's a big crater up here, meteorite crater impact. So we're going to drive up to that and have a bit of a look at that before working our way around and trying to find a pretty good free camp for the night. Hey Harry, what do you think these footprints are? They're camels? Yeah, I reckon they are. Look, they've got big footprints though. 
walking all the way along here. <laughs> we just spotted a camel crossing the road. Just ahead of us. Dad's gonna find the drone up to see him. We'll see him on. Definitely in Brumby territory. Hi now. Alright, we're gonna pull over, air up, and we're gonna head around to the McDonald Rangers, find ourselves at the campsite. Just finished airing up the tyres, taking back to road pressures. I just wanted to show you this. We have passed at least 30, possibly 40 tyres just like this one. And while I was pumping up the tyre pressures, I've had at least 10 cars go past me either way. They're just not changing their tyre pressures and then they're littering with their wheels. So they're wondering why they're getting damaged wheels and stuff. So it's just a reminder to get your tyre pressures right, drive to conditions, and then you're not going to have to worry about damaged tyres. And that's basically what's happened with us towing this big, big ass van. Very, very important. Here we go. So this is the sealed inner loops. So this is completed in 2017 and this creates a loop from the Stewart Highway um, around West McDonald Ranges, etc. So we've just come off the outer loop onto this seal part. So up here there'll be an intersection. You can go right and loop back to Stewart or go left around with the West McDonald Ranges to Stewart. So we're going to do that. We're just pulling up here to have a look at Tyler's Pass. This is a lookout on the way, the first big lookout at the McDonald Ranges. Yeah, it's quite windy up here. 
that actually the crater? That's Goss's Pass, that's the, the actual crater, look at that. We're driving through the West McDonald Ranges and they're pretty pretty. We're literally surrounded by these ranges. They look taller than they look on the screen. They're huge. Right, we've parked up at the visitor centre, we've got our swimming gear on, we're going to go for a walk to the Ormiston Gorge and have a bit of a swim. So there's a kiosk here, you can get food and coffee, and it's only 500 metres to the gorge, so it's a simple walk, off we go. So we've swam in a heap of different gorges and pools in Western Australia, so we're not, we're not new to cold swimming pools. We'll see what the Ormiston Gorge has for us. This is actually a permanent water hole here, there's always water in it. And Obviously it gets much deeper in the wet season when this river behind us just fills up and floods down, turning this whole area into just a water paradise. Oh, we can see it, the sun's gone. And we're starting to see a little bit of water down there. We just passed the lady who'd been swimming it and said it'd been a bit cold. Who's gonna be first? How's it first? Is it cold? Not really? Right. Justin's made a packed to go in every water hole around Australia, so he's going in. Harry, I think your jacket's inside out. Not as cold as some. You cool down now? <laughs> Okay, that is officially some of the coldest water I've been in. That is freezing. Could only get in for a little bit and had to get out. I haven't had to do that yet in any of the pools we've been in. Maybe the handrail gorge. Maybe on a par with that. <laughs> Al, show us the rock and roll. First you gotta turn into a rock, then you roll. <laughs> Hargrave lookout and apparently it's a rest stop. Oh, that's the sign above. Okay, our camping, there it is. That's the uh, Northern Territory sign, that green and yellow one to look for. There's also phone reception here, so we might be able to tap in. We haven't had oh, phone right. reception for a few days, so I'll be able to touch base, get some messages. Almost looks like we're the only one here. This is going to be fun using these things, and there's a fire pit. We're home. No one else here. No one else here. Wow. Okay, we just need to choose where we want to be, guys. We are laughing. We found our camping spot for the night. Look at that for view. We are on a roll with camping spots for view. And they're free. Golly gosh. Very happy with this. I'm going to pull the van in right here. How good is this for a campsite? You've got fire pits, you've got tables, they've even got water here. Probably have to boil it before eating it. Bins and an unbelievable view of the West McDonald Ranges. Oh, and you've got internet and Wi Fi and phone reception. How good is that? The phone's set up. We're boosting our signal. Luckily, it's appropriate technology and it's not inappropriate technology because <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't let the kids out here. So we're just getting some signals, checking the messages, we're all good. It's another day. We've woken up this morning to sunrise from the windows. We opened up all the windows so everyone got to watch the sun come up over the West McDonald Ranges in the morning. And this morning we're going to go have a look at a couple of walks and then go and do maybe a couple of swims before heading back to Alice and starting our trek across to Queensland. Beautiful day. 
let's get into it. You can see in the road here all these colours, it's sort of uh, leaked out from the side. We're going to go find out what's causing all these colours. Apparently there's an ochre pit nearby which is used by the Aboriginals for their paintings, the different colours that they then grind down and add water to to do all their paintings. So it's not far from here. We're going to check into that before we go and find that camp. I'm just going to go from the car park here, just a short one. We're going to walk along and then we're going to look up at the ochre cliffs and check them all out on the way through. You can keep going to a bigger walk, but we're not going to do that today. These are, look, you can see where they dug it out. Look at the holes. Let's have a look. Yeah, it was used for Aboriginals. Used to. You can see the different colours. So these are the ochre pits. You're not allowed to remove any of this ochre here, but you can see the different colours. There's whites, yellows, reds, and they'd all be taken out and then ground up into a paste and then used for ceremony, for artworks, decoration, colouring baskets, all kinds of things that we've learned about as we've travelled around Australia. We're coming into the Ellery Big Hole. Beautiful dry riverbed over on the left here. Ellery Creek, so Ellery Creek, big hole. Not a sealed road on the way in though. Two k's of this corrugation's coming out of it, which is a bit odd given that Ormiston was fully sealed and everything else is sealed around here, but uh, this one's not. Bumpy ride. Parked up here in the coach parking, it's really odd. In the places we visited here in the West McDonald Ranges, they have car parks and then they have coach parking only. I'm not sure why they. Um, don't have caravan parking, we've got big spots for, for the coaches and things like that, so kind of weird. So the Dolomites Walk takes you through a dry riverbed uh, from the car park. It's only about 3k, should take about 40 odd minutes to, to go around and then we can finish up at the, the big hole. This walk takes you over the hills and this is made of calcium and magnesium. It's known as Dolomite, that's what makes up most of these hills. Softer than some of the stones we've seen. And once we get to the end of the hills walk, we'll come back through the riverbed. So what these are saying here is that on the left hand side, you've got hard red quartzite. So it's made up of that quartz and the sand over time compressed into this really hard mountain. Yet on the right here, you've actually got the much softer dolomite made up of calcium and magnesium. Now, this forms a perfect little gully here. So water comes down and through forming, a, I guess, a perfect oasis. First aid, you good, Harry? Yeah. What happened? Splinter, I took a tumble. Always carry a first aid bag in your pack. Our first aid bag is actually our backpack, so always got it with us. Sits in the car, it's got water, it's got first aid. Just in case of any problems like that on our walks. This is what we can see from the mountains when we're looking down over the McDonald Ranges. And it's just mounds of spinifex and it almost plants itself perfectly and grows in these little clumps. And from afar, it just looks unreal. As you sort of swing around, look at the mountains. You can see just the combination of the spin effects and the rock it looks awesome. Broken up only by some random children. We've come all the way through this valley here, basically from the campground. I've always been testing how strong the spin effects is. They're balancing their drink bottles on it, rocks on it. It's actually used for habitat for a lot of animals, from birds through to reptiles, also some of the smaller marsupials. It's um, pretty important here in the outback. It is fast to burn, so when there is bushfires, it burns away, but it quickly does come back and provides that important habitat. Headed down to the river now, and this takes us all the way back to the car park, back towards the Ellery Creek Big Hole, which is a paved walk down to the watering hole. Look at the size of it. Beautiful. You see any fish has? It's nice and clear. The boys will take any opportunity to skim a rock, including the big one over there. The big kid that is. Yep. We've done a speed visit to the West McDonald Ranges the last couple of days. It's different again to anywhere else that we've done. We've done a lot of gorges now and we're 
almost gorged out, dangerous thing to say, but nearly. But this one was different again. And what probably stood out with the landscape this time was all the spin effects. So heaps and heaps of spin effects everywhere. And it almost looks like it's been landscaped. It's quite pretty and you can sort of see where the Australia Garden uh, landscaping comes from because it's just natural out here. That's what it's like out here in the outback and in this area of Australia. Just past another rim on the road, so the, the uh, Manini, what is it called? The Manini Loop? Marini Loop. Marini Loop. The Marini Loop. It's been a lot of fun. So Kings Canyon, West McDonald Ranges, highly recommend going on the outer. We have missed um, the part of the lower part of the Marini Loop, so if you have more time you might go and do that as well. But it means a little bit of backtracking from Alice Springs. But we met plenty of people who are doing the whole inner loop in a day, so quite a thing to do. But all in all, pretty awesome experience. But we're ready to head to Queensland, so let's get rolling. <laughs>